Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all, and thanks for some of you like to following along. Like, you know, greatly appreciate it. Again, this is not my talk, so you don't be scared. Like, you know, that I'm talking too much here. So I'm just doing the cheerleading. So this will be a talk by Chatri Vimalasen on uh, the thrift integration. So I'll just uh, hand it off to her quickly, like setting some context on the era of itself, like you know, and so on. So. Again, like you know, we'll, uh, as you can see from the title, also like you know, we'll try uh, we'll try to cover like you know, few aspects here. So um, we'll just like you know, clear also want to get a sense of like you know, what you'll be looking for here. And then also the key takeaway here is you'll have some like you know, a courtesy of the, the author and the publishers for the programmer uh, guide to Apache Thrift, uh, Randy. Like you now we have uh, the forty percent discount coupon code on all the mining like you no. Know, uh, they generously gave for all the attendees, like they can write it down, and of course, you got to wait until the end of the talk so that you don't take the coupon and run away. And then uh, also, like, you know, we'll have a free book, free ebook, like, you know, which is $40 worth, a programmer's guide to eat Apache Thrift, of course, like, you know, I'm not giving, so we'll just take the email and pass it on, and then uh, Randy and the publishers will find, figure out a way to get you that. And we don't know yet, like you know, how we'll um, get that, uh, give that, give away that free, or how to identify the free book. But like, keep engaged, and then like, you know, keep asking the right questions, and we'll figure it out. So, again, like you know, you know just like you know, we'll go over like the thrift itself and some Iravata, and then like you know, what's our experiences have been in thrift. So before we get started, like you know, here like. Just to get a sense of, like, you know, have anyone been using Thrift or already from the Thrift uh, PMC or the community? So from the Thrift community, PMC community? Yeah, but you've been using Thrift. So feel free to, like, you know, so we'll defer some of the questions to you too. So feel free to uh, share your experiences as well and uh, characters if we are, like, you know, these, like, you know, we are trying to act as, like, you know, as a use case and see if is Thrift good for our particular problem. We are generally not trying to, like, you know, again, Gain uh, the thrift insights itself. So, and um, for others, like, you know, do we know about the basic what thrift is, or do you really like, you know, would like to hear from us, like, you know, anyone? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we have slides. Uh, we'll try to, you know, like, you know, based on the intro level, like, you know, we wanted to skip or like, you know, go over. So, give a small introduction here again. Um, thanks to Randy for uh, sharing these slides as well. Again. Uh, I'll not uh, speak for the data itself, like you no, know, so uh, not too much. But the, I mean, the, of course, like you know, Randy when like you know when he sent this slide, like you know, they were trying to uh, look at like you know TOB index to see how various programming languages get used over the years, and then like you know, and so on. But like you know, here at least like you know, I want to just use this slide as indicator that like you know, the key thing like on you know, the last one really like you know. Uh, if we are building a system like you know supporting cross language interoperability and it, you know, it's it's not a luxury anymore. It becomes a necessity, and you'll see your downstream users like you know trying to use in all kind of languages, and then they're like you know, and then more and more like you know, one of the interesting aspects like you know, as opposed to in the thrift like you know, we'll talk more is like even on the server side like you know, not just on the uh, your downstream users consuming it, on even on the server implementation, you'll want to have a hybrid of different languages like you'll get. In your organization on your project like you no know, one passionately like Java and your Colleague passionately hates it, like you know, and you don't want to just accommodate both of them and work in their own favorite languages, like you know. So, so to, to sum up, like you know, what uh, Thrift, like you know, is a high-performance uh, RPC framework in a nutshell, like you know, and it, it provides uh, it it brings lots of concepts back um, from the old Corba uh, days, like you know, if I may state that, like you know, I don't know if the Thrift. PMC like you know, acknowledges that and a lot. At least I find like uh, find lot of uh, concept regenerated from then, and then uh, and also like you know as as we have been talking about this multi language support like uh, but and also it takes care of a lot of uh, goes back to this uh, need for like you know do you really need a marshalling and unmarshalling frameworks and you don't want like you know the writing a lot of code about that and like you know let like the framework itself take care of it and focus on your application aspects of it and then of course like the um, a lot of it also bases around the performance aspect mainly comes from uh, sending the binary data over the wire like you know and we'll, we'll see a little more about the, some of them and then also the last but not the least and also one of the interesting um, uh, one of factor feature which interests us is the whole 
backward and forward um, uh, compatibility of the APIs and the so client server interactions here. Of course, that there is no automatic magic there, but like you know, if we do some disciplined uh, coding, like with the interface descriptions itself, like you know, the thrift like you know, natively provides that, like so that your code doesn't freak out, like with tech faults and so on, uh, like you know, uh, with the older client, newer services, and so on. And then again, like keeping the introduction short here, like you know, thrift, like there's five simple steps to get you started. Like the first thing is the thrift in the middle starts with an interface uh, description language where you describe uh, your services and like you know, your structures like you know, and then basically your signatures like you know, and then also spe specifying your data models that are optional uh, required fields here and then like you know and two three has some concrete examples from the iravata thrift files and how all of these like steps will look like but once you you generate that and then you use the thrift installation locally uh, to generate the client uh, the the server side uh, <laughs> the skeleton codes, like you know, or like the client side stubs, like you know, where, and then in your in the in all the languages it, it supports, like you know, you can have a Java server side skeleton generated and lots of PHP, Python, Perl, like you no know, clients and so on, and um, and similarly, like once you have like generated, like you know, you'll plug in like you know your um, handlers like on the server side, and then you write your keep writing your uh, client code, and you'll leave all the details of the thrift to changing the flexibly changing the the protocols or the transport and so on. So, and, and of course, like you know, again, um, I'll not be able to speak much to this because we've been only um, using Thrift uh, from only one side of it, from the RPC side, uh, and like you know, uh, and we haven't like really used Thrift uh, in the in the first two options here. You will see more on the as a streaming communication client or or even like you know, as some of the projects has used as a uh, messaging uh, framework. So um, we'll just focus like, you know, on our experiences mainly from using it as a <coughs> RPC client server um, aspects here. And then, uh, so if you look at like the, the architecture, for say like of the framework itself or how your code plugs in, like you, know, you have the ideas, you write it in the middle, and then you, uh, you generate the, uh, the server and the, and the client stubs here, and of course, like you know, the, you'll also use uh, in your deployment, like you know, your dependencies, the thrift class libraries in the in your favorite programming language, like you know, what you are using. If your server, you have like a Maven plugin for the jar, like you no know, for the, just for the dependencies aspects here, and then um, and then so on, like you know, and you can use other languages and so on. So, there uh, not a, a lot of native thrift class libraries which will help you with all the tra transports and the protocols which are supported, and you'll just plug in your server uh, the service handler from the ideal code generated. Like you know, you'll write the implementation, um, and then like you know, bundle all of it together. Like you know, in, in your server deployments or when you are distributing your client package, uh, both the thrift libraries as well as your uh, the client stuff generated with it, and then of course some samples and so on. And then uh, again, like you know, I'll stop there. But I'll uh, we can go a little more uh, into it. But like just to look at the thrift roadmap, like you know, the current release version is 0.91, and that's what we are basing our uh, experiences is from. And then uh, the 0.92 is like if you follow the thrift developer mailing list, like you know, it's uh, it's ongoing. And like you know, I, I just grabbed this slide from Randy. Like you know, I hope he's here. He's he's an authoritative source there. But like you know. He put a caveat there, like you no, know, never trust the predictions. But um, it's going on their roadmap for uh, releasing 0.92 and then towards their 1.2 release. So again, in addition to the Thrift website, like you know, to follow along with the Thrift, uh, just look at the Thrift website, or like you know, you can directly check out the code either the Apache's Git mirror itself or the uh, the GitHub uh, read-only mirror. And like and again, um, the user and dev mailings are quite active, and we been impressed like you know we've been able to ask a lot of questions and actually uh, I, I find the thrift IRC channel also like you know uh, always like you know we have people there and like they take it lens like they always uh, welcome a um, lot of uh, participation and then a lot of questions so and of course like you know one free ebook and then also the first chapter of the ebook here like you know by Randy is like you know is free to download and you'll at least get the the whole introduction, what thrift is, what the motivation behind it, and so on from it. Um, yeah, I, I, before we switch gears, like, you know, I'll stop there. Uh, I'll pause for a minute and see so is that good enough. You got uh, right, at least some context on what thrift is. Right? So, and then, like, you know, 
you'll be able to find some of the history and so on on their website. It, it basically originated in um, Facebook, like you know, when some of the former developers who are working with uh, Google Protobuf, like you know, which is a related one, which Chitri will have a brief mention of um, of the comparison here. But um, again, like you know, we are we do not want to spend a whole lot of time and just focus on the use case and how we've been live, why we've been looking at Thrift for our uh, to solve our problem. But uh, you'll be able to find a lot of it um, if you Google or if you find on the mailing list comparison of Thrift with Protobuf and so on. So it originated from Facebook, like you now when they realized like you know uh, Protobuf is good for them, but it needs a lot of language supports, and it also they also wanted an open community framework, like you know Protobuf is open source but largely developed and controlled by Google. So Facebook, like you now uh, open source, it started on this uh, Thrift and then bought it to Apache, and now like you know a lot of uh, various companies um, and then a lot of projects you will see within Apache and outside use Thrift and some of the ones like use at scale like uh, like Evernote has been using like you know Thrift to completely deliver their public APIs. Facebook uses Thrift for their internal scaling of the infrastructure and facilitate their developer diversity in uh, setting up these various programming language services and so on but like you know Evernote is uh, what like you know we feel attracted at the use our use case is similar to that where they distribute all their like you no know, public APIs and distribute different language clients uh, for people to program against. There are a lot more examples as well, but again, again I think the book has some of them as well. So, uh, completely switching context here, like you know, before we uh, dive into like you know why we've been looking into the thrift in the first place, or like you know what our experience have been, like you know, just we'll briefly introduce about this uh, Apache Airavata project. But before um, I go there, like, you know, briefly say about a little bit, a couple of words about Science Gateway. So, I don't know if you heard or not, uh, this could be like a bit more specialized uh, term, maybe. Uh, but I think you can infer something from the, the two words, uh, science and the gateways here. Uh, but like, you know, basically like, you know, the Science Gateways in a nutshell, what they do is like, you know, there are lots of, uh, the infrastructures like you know below like you know where scientists to do or for mainly for the experimental scientists leverage upon like you know from computational resources to like you know the models mathematical models or the data they ingest and then uh, and, and and then lots of like other tooling they provide uh, they develop around this infrastructure and then like, and they're not easy to use like in you know, a simple example like you know some of the one of the early science gateways where like you know I got involved um, running a real-time forecast prediction. If you want to run a real case, um, forecast around Denver area, like you know, uh, getting uh, starting from all the observation sources and getting a prediction, it takes at least six months for someone to learn through like a process on to really create a real-time forecast. And really, um, and then like you know, a simple example of one of the Perl scripts, like you know, which was running such system was 50,000 lines of Perl script, like just bringing in, just doing the uh, the orchestration, bringing which data to bring, which program to call. And so on. So there are a lot of things like that happen. And then, um, and even these commercial companies and uh, weather, uh, like weather.com and all, buy these data sources from some of these operational forecasts done by the uh, Opera Nova and so on. So, like, gateways was a concept, like, you know, which came up with this kind of examples where how do you really democratize? How do you take these, like, scripts or, like, a lot of knowledge, all of them, and, like, and make them a, a diverse set of audience do this? It may be a student, so it may be a researcher, like, you know, if I'm starting to research, or in this case, uh, in the previous example, as an atmospheric researcher, I want to uh, directly focus on the models and not on the instrumentation, how to run the models and so on. So how do you quickly jump directly into it? That were all the kind of the various democratization aspect these gateways were enabling. So, and then uh, there are lots much, a uh, lot of uh, examples here, like, you know, and then there's only a small set of the fields here, like, you know, you'll see that the, they vary all over various fields of science from uh, phylogenetic to like you know protein structure analysis to kind of molecular optimization uh, system grades. Um, I'll go. I'll not go into a lot of detail, but like the key thing here, like you know, to take away from um, here is way. That's where like in the Apache Airavata project originated from, which is there are these gateway infrastructure where they are building like you know take away from all these lowest level infrastructure and and resource layer and data specific views to uh, to develop a science specific view. In doing so, there are a lot of common things all of these gateways are dealing with, like you know, from uh, data and uh, orchestral job, job, computational job management, or like you know, really 
keeping all of this information and track and providing real time monitoring information. So there's a lot of common things where the, these different times projects are doing and so how can we like you know abstract out and provide. So that's the core of what the Apache Airavata does. So here like you know what brings us to the thrift here is this challenge like you know of developing the APIs and then how do we keep this uh, system like you know serving such a diverse discipline, science disciplines um, uh, using these various uh, computational resources. And then like you know, on other aspects like you know, again, uh, um, uh, a lot, I mean, I, Chetri will cover some of her, like in some of these components during her discussion, but just provide a glimpse of that is, so there are various things like largely mainly to uh, computational management to uh, provide the virtualization for, for application or in the abstraction and uh, keeping all the system like you know, in a common information model and so on. So when Airavata is facilitating that, what the API really gets challenged is, like you know, this translation, like you know, each science, like the scientific discipline looks at this translation in a different way. Uh, e even this is a, like you know, broad generalization, which is hard from accurate, which is um, scientists just really looks at this as like yet another uh, experimental device. Like you know, I'm doing an experiment, like you know, I'm providing data to it, it provides results back and let you translate the, all the, what this means in the back end, like you know, which means or uh, you may be running through a workflow system, like in a lot of it, you are running through a data management system. So the takeaway for us, like you know, from this uh, thrift discussion is the simplification we need to do. And then there is this, uh, we really like the semantic meanings of all of these mean different things to different things. So that means like we have an Apache era with a user community trying to use the API in a different ways. And, and in, in, in addition to that, like, you know, Airavata, like, you know, just provides a, a layer, like, you know, it just, if you look at keep layering all of this, like, the typical any of the big data stack layers or, like, you know, any of the cyber infrastructure layers, like, you know, however you call it, there are these layers from resources, and then there are these layers which are providing this middleware support and the portals and the users. How do you provide interactivity through all these layers, and how can API avoid this? Again, a little bit overwhelming details here, not to go through the details, but, like, you know, see, there are a lot of, uh, things happening here. How do we provide like in all of this uh, uh, to the API? And then the lastly, and then if you look at it, especially in this uh, very more true for the science than the business model use cases are, uh, science by nature is exploratory nat in nature. And then you cannot expect like, you know, uh, predefined, even if you take a workflow into a consideration. Previously, we're using a lot of workflows, like you know, a lot of overlap with business flow process flows where like everything is predicted, whereas in this, by, by definition, like, you know, there are a lot of uncertainties, like, you know, the science, uh, the, mod the mathematical model or the, uh, the uh, resources underlying are, like, you know, changing and, like, you know, we can, cannot determine a priorly. At the same time, like, you know, the user is really steering, like, you know, he would look at this middleware as, how can I, like, you know, as yet in his chemistry lab experiment, like my tubes and all I'm mixing, trying and literally like that. So how can you, Challenge all of this in an API is what like you know, motivated us. Like you know, how can we address and to look at threat? So with this, like you know, um, I'll turn it to uh, Chetri on, on like you know to discuss some of this. Like you know, how uh, in Ira with the project, like you know, we've been uh, to uh, exploring thrift to uh, address the key things here, like which are uh, the open-ended challenges that the, the development uh, frictions on emerging APIs. Uh, flexibility to the APIs, keeping the compatibilities of backward and forward compatibilities and various programming language needs. The gateways I was talking to, different disciplines, they develop in different programming languages. And we have this need of providing like, you know, uh, various PHP client to C++, any scripting language they keep coming asking. How do we keep this maintaining of the clients and then keep the server going through this emerging requirement? It's kind of the base of the problem, what like, you know, Chetri is trying to explore here in the talk here. Thank you, Suresh. Um, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Chatri from uh, Apache Airata project. Uh, so, Suresh talked uh, about uh, how the uh, Airata evolved through the years and uh, uh, who are the users of uh, Airata project, uh, about science creators and all. Uh, so, uh, 
so for uh, users of uh, Apache Airwata, Airwata API is the most important part because uh, because it's the it's the uh, main component that uh, they will uh, directly interact with. Uh, as Suresh men mentioned, science gateways are very uh, very uh, diverse, heterogeneous systems. Uh, they have a lot of a uh, uh, lot of requirements, and those requirements are changing uh, very frequently. Uh, so Airwata, so Airwata API uh, needs to uh, ne needs to handle those uh, changes, and also uh, it should be uh, simple and uh, easy to understand for 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 a user who is coming from a very different domain, uh, and also uh, most of the, these science gateways are like uh, they are existing systems, so they they have their portals uh, running for a couple of years and they are pretty comfortable with uh, what they have so if if they are going to uh, integrate uh, apache airwata with their with their existing system uh, that uh, integration should be uh, uh, very little overhead on on their side uh, that means uh, we need to provide a uh, lot of uh, lot of uh, tooling and lot of support uh, in order to uh, make that uh, integration smooth Uh, so uh, this is uh, Airwata API look like uh, previously. So uh, so you can see that uh, this is not a very uh, good model. Uh, so uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, why we why we end up with uh, this kind of model. So uh, Airwata uh, initiated uh, maybe early uh, 2000. So in that time. Uh, SOAP is considered as the uh, technology leader when when uh, when developing uh, systems uh, which communicate with uh, remote resources and all. Uh, and also, uh, most of the uh, early contributors of Apache Airwata project is also coming from the so same ba same background. So uh, they develop uh, all the uh, Airwata core components as uh, SOAP services. Uh, but uh, later we realized that uh, having SOAP services for, for all our component is not the uh, best fit for us because uh, uh, we had some uh, science gateways developed using uh, uh, PHP, uh, Python, and, uh, and some scripting language, languages. Uh, and uh, they, f they face a pretty hard time when they want to uh, integrate uh, our SOAP services with uh, their existing system. So uh, as a solution, uh, uh, we thought of having a, a REST interface in front of our uh, API, uh, which makes our architecture a hybrid model. And with this hybrid model, uh, it makes a lot of complication inside Airwata. Uh, and Airwata data model become uh, pretty complex. And, uh, and uh, we couldn't hide that uh, complexity from Airwata API as well. So, so Airwata API become uh, pretty large, and uh, it's it, it's not a simple API anymore. And uh, and also still even we even we had a REST interface, uh, it it still uh, give a lot of burden in the client side because uh, we only had uh, Java clients. So if a, if a gateway written in a, in a different language, maybe PHP or C plus plus, they have to write uh, their own client in order to uh, integrate. Uh, Airwata API. So uh, we need a solution for this problem uh, pretty badly. Um, so uh, this is the recap of uh, approaches that we that we take uh, when we uh, when we developing Airwata API. As I mentioned earlier, our first approach is the uh, SOAP uh, web services approach. Uh, we like about SOAP because uh, it's a well-defined standard. And uh, it's a it's an open standard, so like uh, if I if I provide you the uh, whistle of the service, uh, you will know uh, what kind of message uh, you should uh, send to the server side and what kind of message you will receive in the uh, receive when receive. So so it's it's a it's a well defined uh, standard. But the problem, but the biggest challenge we had with uh, SOAP is, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, integrating with the client is uh, pretty hard. 
uh, and uh, SOAP is not a uh, lightweight framework. And uh, our next approach is uh, REST up to approach. Uh, using REST uh, gives us the uh, gives us a solution to the previous problem. Now we now we can uh, integrate uh, uh, clients written in those scripting languages easily because uh, REST has that JSON uh, representation. Uh, and also it's uh, lightweight compared to SOAP. Uh, but, uh, uh, but a major challenge we face with REST is uh, it doesn't have any standard. We don't have a way to uh, define our, our service. So like if a client try to use, uh, use our REST service, they will have to know, know about, the, uh, about the JSON message that they will get uh, before they uh, develop their uh, REST client. So, so, uh, so uh, even with those two approaches, uh, still our clients has a lot of burden in their side uh, because uh, we don't have uh, we don't have support to other other uh, other languages other than Java, uh, and also I told you previously we had this hybrid uh, architecture. And uh, it makes uh, our data model uh, pretty complicated internally. Uh, and also, when we moving from SOAP to REST, because we had those complex data models, uh, we had to come up with some simple uh, object layers, and uh, which which gave us a lot of uh, marshalling and unmarshalling of object objects. And uh, it's pretty hard to maintain. Uh, and also, with both these approaches. Uh, we need to uh, we need to have a servlet container in our server side, uh, which we uh, feel as uh, as an unnecessary uh, need. Uh, and also, uh, with those two approaches, uh, we we, di we, didn't, we didn't have a way to uh, support backward compatibility. So like uh, so, with uh, changing requirements of science gateways, uh, we need to uh, frequently change our data models and. Uh, uh, because of that, uh, our API had a lot of uh, uh, lot of uh, overwhelming number of methods with uh, a lot of overheads. Uh, so uh, we need a better solution to uh, define. Uh, we need a better solution to fix all these problems. So uh, as our next approach, uh, we research on. Uh, RPC style tools like uh, Apache Tree protocol buffers and Apache Avro. So uh, these tools uh, gave us uh, two major benefits. Uh, one is uh, uh, now we now, now we can uh, easily communicate with uh, different programming languages, and also uh, all these tools uh, provide you a way to uh, generate uh, server side and client client code, which is a uh, which is a uh, plus. For, for from a developer's point of view, so uh, we choose uh, Apache Thrift because uh, it is also an Apache project like us. And also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we need to ease the burden from our clients. So we thought uh, having a client library uh, is much uh, much important uh, for our users than having open API like REST. Uh, and also Thrift provide us a, a light framework. Uh, we don't have to depend on uh, any servlet container because Thrift has its own uh, server implementations. And as Suresh mentioned, uh, Thrift has a pretty uh, easy learning curve to get started. So uh, creating, a, uh, creating a struct uh, and then service and generate code and start uh, communicating between your servers and clients are pretty easy with Thrift. And, uh, and also, it uh, gives us a way to uh, uh, support uh, backward and forward compatibility between the servers and client. So, so we, we might not need to have those uh, large number of uh, overloaded methods uh, after this. Uh, and also, uh, Thrift uh, gave a clean way to define uh, ideas. Uh, so like this is an example from Apache Ayurveda. So we have a, a data model called experiment. So this uh, experiment data model is uh, 
pretty complicated data model. Uh, it has all the information related to the experiment and uh, uh, about experiment inputs uh, and uh, in which computation resource it's going to run and all the information related to experiment is in, in that uh, data model. So we were able to uh, represent such a complex uh, data model using Thrift because it has, it has a richer data structures. Uh, so this data model has a lot of uh, other data, other structures as references and a lot of enums and a lot of uh, lists and other primitive types. Uh, uh, so, so you can see that even a complex data model uh, we can uh, define using Thrift. And, uh, and, uh, even, and when you define the service, you can consume that, uh, consume that uh, complex data model uh, uh, easily. And also, Thrift provides you a way to uh, define exceptions. Uh, you can define all the exceptions in a separate Thrift file, and uh, you can uh, use those exceptions when you define your service. So uh, this is how uh, Apache Thrift is integrated with uh, Apache Airavata. So uh, we are not uh, completely done with this integration. We are still halfway. Uh, so at the moment, uh, we have uh, Airavata API server and Airavata orchestrator as Thrift service. Uh, and uh, in the future, we are planning to have all the other components as Thrift services as well. So uh, at the moment, we have some, we developed some client libraries for PHP, Java, and C++. So now, uh, if, if, we, if, uh, if, so, if we have some gateway written in uh, PHP, uh, they can easily uh, integrate uh, Airavata API with, uh, with their system because they just need to use our client SDK. And this is how we uh, organize uh, trip related code, code inside our uh, repository. So what we did was uh, we defined a separate module called Airavata API and uh, it will have all the trip related uh, classes. So. Uh, Airavata data model and Airavata API stubs will have generated code. So uh, note that Airavata data model is the one, uh, those data models we are using uh, internally as well as by clients. And uh, Airavata API server is the actual server implementation code. Uh, and we have uh, different client SDKs under Airavata client SDKs. Uh, and all the thrift description files under in a separate uh, package. And uh, another thing that we did did, did was uh, uh, we borrowed a, a script from uh, Apache Accumulo project, which is also using thrift. So this uh, script will uh, generate the code, uh, generate the code, and then copy the code uh, into the appropriate locations. Uh, while it copying, it will check whether whether it has any difference with the previous one. It will not blindly copy. Uh, it will check uh, are there any modification and then copy only the modified code. Uh, so uh, experience uh, we had uh, so far with Thrift integration is uh, uh, pretty good. Uh, so, so we were able to uh, solve uh, most of the key issues that we face with previous Airavata API. Uh, now we, 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 can, uh, we can support uh, clients written in different languages. And also, we don't have to have that uh, hybrid design anymore. Uh, now our uh, design is uh, much cleaner. Uh, and also, uh, Thrift has a different server implementation. Uh, so uh, you can use uh, uh, whatever the whatever server implementation fit for you. So even in our case, we we use uh, different components use uh, different server implementations. So, for example, our orchestrator server uh, use uh, uh, thread pool server, uh, but uh, uh, but our Airavata API server use uh, T simple server. Uh, and also because we use uh, uh, generated data models internally in Airavata, we don't have to have that uh, un marshalling unmarshalling layer. Uh, 
and uh, and we also experienced that uh, the thrift survey is very robust. Uh, we were able to handle a large number of uh, concurrent requests. Uh, since all the code is auto-generated, uh, it's easy to do uh, data model changes. Uh, so I told you earlier that uh, science gateway requirements are changing all, all the time. So it's it, we have a high tendency to change changing our data models uh, frequently. So because of because of this uh, auto generator capability, uh, now we can uh, do the do those modifications pretty easily. And also, uh, Thrift gave us a better way to uh, achieve uh, forward and backward compatibility. Uh, while while integrating Thrift, uh, we uh, we uh, learned some lessons. So we thought of sharing them with you because we thought uh, they might be helpful for you as well if you are trying to do the same thing as we as we do. Uh, so one good lesson we learn is uh, to modularize your data models as much as possible. Uh, that will help you to uh, maintenance your code base uh, easily. So in Ayurveda, we have all the uh, experiment-related data models in a separate TRIF file, and uh, workspace-related all the data, data models in a separate TRIF file. And uh, we have uh, another uh, TRIF file, which will uh, include all these child uh, TRIF files. Uh, so, uh, so that's uh, uh, one lesson that we learn. And also, uh, another thing is, uh, Currently, uh, Triff doesn't have a, Triff doesn't have a, a Maven plugin to uh, generate code uh, without Triff being installed in your system. Uh, so you have to uh, you have to commit uh, auto-generated code into your repository. And uh, another thing uh, that we learned is uh, uh, you have to add uh, proper do documentation to your structs and services as much as possible. And, uh, and another little thing is like uh, if you want to uh, if you want to avoid uh, duplicates in your list uh, instead of a list uh, you can use set uh, and uh, another thing that we learn is uh, thrift has uh, very limited support to handle null values so uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, our experiment model is a pretty complicated one so it has a lot of other structures uh, referring it and and uh, and uh, so like uh, if you are trying to retrieve that uh, experiment model you have to uh, make sure that uh, all the required fields are set otherwise uh, it will it uh, it will throw you some exceptions and also if you are if you are using enums uh, you you have to uh, at least set a default value for those enums uh, when you retrieving retrieving them uh, and uh, another another thing is uh, Thrift has very limited documentation and samples, uh, so uh, we encourage you to use uh, Airavata as a reference, since it's also a, a Apache project. Uh, you can uh, take a, a clone of our GitHub uh, repository and uh, see uh, what we did with uh, Apache Thrift. Um, uh, with that, uh, I'll hand over to Suresh talk about uh, future directions. Yeah, again, um, big questions. We have more future directions in general, like, you know, our plans, like, you know, with Thrift, like, you know, yeah, we plan to continue, like, you know, with Thrift, like, really, like, and I think we'd not go over this parts of, like, uh, but in the morning we will be talking about, like, you know, in the Airavata, like, you know, and how we've been engaging with various architectural discussions and contributions on how we, like, you know, um, uh, Created an architecture list and trying to solicit interest from the community on like, you know, what do you think? Like, you know, we have this problem. Basically, focus on uh, the problem and not on the tools or the technology. What we've been like, you know, describe Airavata problem enough, uh, with uh, and then encourage uh, a lot of contributions on the architecture list. Yeah, is Rift good for you for this? Or oh, yeah, for the messaging need, maybe look for this kind of projects. Uh, this kind of technology is good for you, and then and so forth. So. And and then with Airavata itself, like you know, our key motivation to go towards Thrift is because like you know, we are taking this architecture towards uh, creating a platform as a service approach, so that we'll need to create this load balance fault tolerance architecture. So like you know, how do we create this? 
uh, services like you know which are like you know the main key roles and then maybe like like looks like like a devops like scenarios where others can put a other kind of parallel implementation like instead of using a grid computation resource a cloud one or when a service goes down like you know bring back the other one and, and thrift nicely give some of those things like for instance we really like you know as Chitri was mentioning some of them like the scaling of this on the server side components the threading versus like a single threaded implementation versus an event based implementation how do you basically route your implementation to various uh, back end services and all of them like you know have been very uh, helpful for us so we uh, we've been uh, mainly like you know looking at uh, Thrift, like you know, as a starting point, like towards this era of the 1.0, and then, and then finally here, like you know, uh, if you want to join, uh, and then like you know, help us out, like you know, or just curious on what we've been doing, like you know, is in addition to the pointers uh, Chitri pointed out, we constantly um, encourage people uh, and ask questions and like you know, take help on the architecture mailing list on one of some of these discussions. But uh, even otherwise, like you know, we always like you know on the era of the mailing list, or or you can drift or any of the Apache project mailing list actually uh, bring in your either any of the your like you know just a criticism, a constructive criticism on what the project should be doing, or or like you know, if you have code that's all and well and or improved documentation and so on. So it's always nice. So particularly just speaking for Airavata, like you know, we certainly encourage you all, like you know, and we'll hope to see some of you there. Yeah, and then I, I think like you know, we just leave some good time like you know for some questions on like you know the thrift integration on IRA or IRA itself. Like, and I'll defer the technical questions to Chetri here. But So to start with, we start, we started with the socket mainly because of the language, uh, because we started with Java and uh, PHP and also. Uh, Part of the reason maybe uh, like see like Airavata we provided lots of quick start uh, tutorials and quickly bring up a server and client and test it. So uh, before we explored HTTP processor like you now without like you know putting up a web server and things like that will add more instructions. So so far like you now we've been fortunately fine you know, just using the plain TCP communications completely uh, uh, for at least like you know the Java PHP and Python it works good and but we certainly have the near future need to explores natively the JavaScript support and so on, and also exploring a lot of more OAuth-like security layer with uh, securing the thrift services. So there, like, you know, we might like look more and more HTTP side like to leverage from some of them, but there were some examples what we have got pointed out on the development mailing list on the thrift, like you can do OAuth over TCP and so on, but you'll find more documentation on that more classic HTTP approaches. So. Yes, two part answer. So basically, uh, as of now, as uh, the plain socket communication, but very soon we might look into HTTP more seriously. Yeah, that's a very important question, and uh, we don't have an answer, but we share your <laughs> question too. We have been having some of similar things. Uh, Sachit is smiling widely, so you want to answer some of them because he's been uh, a Google Summer of Code student. He's been exploring, like going to the Thrift mailing list on some of the mutual authentication support. Sachit, why don't you just explain, like, uh, or like so far what you know of, like, you know, support natively on mutual authentication? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, but it still doesn't address like the key problem what you're saying, like the robots hitting it, like you know, when you're running the automated Jenkins build. So which we need to still find a solution. Our initial thought was like you know, somehow we will uh, create a mutual authentication and then like you know, feed in like you know, during the Maven properties or something at a system level, like you know, set some keys and then like you know, let those test. But I, I don't think so, like we have an answer yet, but like you know, uh, we recognize the problem. Like, you know, Yeah, so uh, that's another interesting question. Actually, like you know, again, like you know, our early experiences, like you know, we have been like you know, so far, like you know, going through this kind of similar problem, but we don't have good answers. But like, let's share like you no know, so far, like you no, know, how we've been approaching this. So we, I'm not so sure, like you know, we, we will soon have that problem, but like you know, in a different way, like you know, Airavata, like you know, if we looked at the architecture early on too, like you know, most, um, I'll quickly go through that diagram. So. So the state is maintained at the client side, like you know, in this kind of case, these gateways, and then like so far, like you know, we issue a get a handle back, and then like you know, keep connecting back. So, in, in a nutshell, like you know, we haven't been like you know, really keeping the the, the clients and servers don't uh, so far like you know have not been exchanging so much, uh, doing a lot of stateful transactions, like you know, quickly like you know, uh, make a request and then like you know, atomic request and then go back and then the client comes back now they get the handle and keeps coming back. But like you no, know, I think like you no, know, we are we are hitting that problem, but hasn't solved it yet. Like which is like some of the things like, uh, um, yeah, getting a, uh, doing queries to get a lot of bulk of information, or doing kind of pagination kind of queries, and like you no, know, when you're doing more and more web interfaces and so on. So, what um, the state we are in, and, and we strongly encourage like you no, know, if you uh, to join the architecture list and so on, and at least like to see how we will be solving at least uh, and if you have thoughts like no please bring them on also but like you know the way we've been approaching is we've been trying to take one step at a time which is solving this whole data model problems and then like you know trying to look at this when we start more integrating more and with direct web interface like, talking to the services we'll soon hit all of those things so far we've been at a luxury of having a kind of a mediation layer like you know which sits in front of it which is observing those kind of stateful one but again um, for that part, like you know, again, uh, those could be some of the pros and cons. Chitru was touching on some of them, like with the soap and dress. We've been so uh, carefully, like you know, uh, cautiously diving into the thrift to see what it has, what it doesn't, and so on. So we have yet to see those, like some of them. So uh, I'm. So uh, it's like uh, so we ha we haven't done any comprehensive uh, uh, performance test. Uh, what we had was uh, so while while we developing uh, these uh, trip services, uh, uh, so uh, we uh, sent uh, we sent something like a thousand concurrent requests to the Apache orchestrator service. Uh, but uh, I, I, I know that it's not a uh, compre comprehensive performance test. Uh, uh, no, not for the second. Uh, it's like a thousand concurrent requests to the server. Uh, so, so we are like, you know, planning to write an academic paper on some of them learning, so hopefully by then, like, you know, these, some of those like, can be benchmarked, all of them. So I think, like, now, uh, yeah. So far, like you know, that test that is referring to has been looking at more at throttle level, like you know, do we really need to throttle at that point or which server takes care? Like you know, and, and, and to expose some of the fault tolerance capabilities as, as an example, uh, uh, in other services, like you know, we'll freak out saying like you no know, Java hit space and our server say fails it. So in this case it was gracefully handled, like you know, the, and then like the server quickly recovered. So we've been looking 
Yeah, so anyone like, you know, who'd like to take advantage of this work, like, you know, who is really like planning to program or move to migrate to Thrift uh, in the near future and would like to, like, uh, love to share the book? Since you've been like bearing all my talks, like, you want to check one? Yeah. Okay, um, I think that kind of concludes our talk. And then, but feel free to find us, like, you know, like, Chitri, and uh, we have a few others from there, also PMC as well, like, you know, if you want really either help, like, or just, like, look through the code or, like, share some ideas or, or at least share the problem. So it'd be so we'll be aware, like, of what we are doing.